is edifying in any way. Um, what do you think about that so far, you guys? Is something not right? Something isn't right with this. I mean, <sighs> what I'll do, I'll, I will put the video that I'm doing here, I'll upload it on YouTube later. Um, basically, get it on there. The thing is, I'm looking at the Noah Hyde laws a little closer and I'm thinking about the seven laws and what they are, what they represent and this panic that is ensuing because of the terror of the Noah Hyde laws. There's a video out there saying you, why you should be terrified of the Noah Hyde laws and I look at them, they're very similar to the Ten Commandments and can you imagine if, if the Ten Commandments, just suppose this, just for, just for the sake of argument, if the Noah Hyde laws are that bad and it carries with it um, a death penalty for anyone who breaks any of their seven laws, just think about this for a minute. Suppose if the Ten Commandments were legalized throughout all the world. Anybody who broke any one of those laws would also suffer the death penalty and that would be by stoning. But those are holy laws. Those are God's holy Ten Commandments. Why are they making that such a hoo-ha about this thing? When um, Dr. Michael Brown done his, um, when he gave his rebuttal, he said that the, uh, that the, the majority, the consensus on the Noahide from all the various communities out there, the consensus is, is that Christians would not be considered idolaters under the Noahide laws. They, they wouldn't. But all the focus that these other channels are putting is basically the decapitations, right? The decapitations, this, where Christians are all going to be considered idolaters and there's a whole, the world juries, there's all a big conspiracy. This is really what they want. There's only one nation in the whole world that has a following of the Noahide. One nation in all the world. It's in the Philippines. Right, it's in the Philippines. That's it. That's as far as their the following has gone. It's it's really not a big movement. Then this hype, this propaganda that's going on, it's causing more people to give too much attention to it, and making it out to be the beast, which it isn't. That's what I think. Think about the Ten Commandments. Can you imagine? Where it says, "You shall have no other gods before me." No images or idols that we cannot worship any 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 god. Not taking God's name in vain, which would be considered blasphemy. Sabbath observant. Can you imagine if that was nationwide implemented? Um, temple sacrifices would have to be instituted. Respecting your father and mother. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. No coveting. Look, look there were punishments under the old covenant for breaking any one of those commandments. There were punishments for them, and it was death by stoning. So by the Noahide folk just talking about, you know, they envision in their ideal utopia that they would love to have this. It's just not going to happen, you guys. It's not going to happen. When you look at them in context, they seem pretty decent laws. You know, if people did abide by the Ten Commandments or the Noahide, the world would be a better place. But what's the real argument here? What's the real argument? What's, what's the language? What's it really spewing out there? And you know what I think it is? It's anti-Semitism. It's anti-Jewish rhetoric. It's very similar to what happened before the Holocaust. I'm going to read something out to you. Just give me a second. I've got my laptop open today. It's called Jewish Deicide. Jewish Deicide or Deicide is a belief held by some Christians that the Jewish people as a whole were responsible for the death of, of Jesus. The anti-Semitic slur, Christ killer, was used by mobs to incite violence against Jews and contributed to many centuries of pogroms, the murder of Jews during the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition and the Holocaust. Three times I had a comment under my video saying, how can I forget, how can I forget, do I, do I not remember who the Christ killers are? That's the same language, is it, is it not? This is the fruit that is coming out of that camp 
that are propagating the Noah Hyde Lords. You should be terrified of the Noah Hyde Lords. This is a big Jewish conspiracy. We know they control all the world. They've got every president in their pocket. This is not right. This is wrong. And I'm coming against it in the name of Jesus. I don't care if I'm the only one out there on YouTube speaking against the Noah Hyde Lord propaganda. Because that's exactly what it is. These people on Israeli News Live, that is all they talk about. They're, they're literally obsessed with it. It's because they've got the thing started. And now they've got to keep up with the momentum. And because little me was on YouTube saying, no, this, this, I don't think this is true. It doesn't seem that way. If you go on US Congress, I've done all my research. Just at home on a basic laptop. It's load of nonsense. And it's because they have the mindset that the Antichrist is Jewish the mystery Babylon is going to be Israel, it's going to be Jerusalem. This is behind their theology. And what I'm going to do next week, let's say Friday next week, I'm going to talk about the Antichrist Jewish, the Jewish Antichrist. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to address this once and for all because I'm really tired of hearing it. It's not scriptural. There's no scriptural foundation for that perception. That theory that people have out there. Why do people not read their Bibles anymore? People have been coming on my video telling me I should read the Bible. I should stick to the word of God. Not be swayed by public opinion. I'm like, that's the very thing that I was saying on my video. <laughs> it's the very thing that I was saying. It just goes to show they're so quick to judge a book by its cover. And didn't listen to what I was saying. Not giving me the benefit of the doubt. But just threw accusations at me. Just so judgmental. It's really, really peculiar that a big channel like these guys would block me. Little me. I mean, it's really, it's really odd. It shouldn't be that way, should it? In the catechism produced by the Council of Trent, the Catholic Church affirmed that the collectivity of sinful humanity was responsible for the death of Jesus. That's right. Who's responsible for the death of Jesus? You can't call all Jews the Christ killers. We all killed Jesus Christ. You killed Jesus Christ. I killed Jesus Christ. It was our sins that caused him to come down from heaven, die on a cross. Our perfect spotless sacrifice. All right? So let's be really real about this. Let's not whitewash it. Let's not turn the finger and blame the Jews. There was a purpose. There's a purpose and a reason, a divine reason for, what, for the way things happened the way it did. What does it say in the book of Romans? Do these people not read the Bible anymore? It's disgusting. It's despicable. I'm ashamed of it. I'm sickened to hear of this anti-Semitic garbage. And what I'm talking about today, it's not Christian Zionism. People think I defend the Jews. I'm suddenly a Christian Zionist. I'm not telling you to go and give your money to the state of Israel, who we know are Masonic. Let's, let's be honest. We're not silly. We're not blind. We know that the majority of the nations of this world, they're all a part of this club, right? The pyramid. We know this for a fact. We know it. We've done our homework. I've done my homework. I'm not, I'm not in any delusion. I haven't got my head in the clouds. But let us be careful. Let's rightly discern what's really going on out there. That's why the Holy Spirit was given to us. He's the spirit of truth. We need to be able to discern right from wrong. The voice of the enemy is loud and clear coming out of that camp over there. The Noah Hyde be terrified of the Noah Hyde laws. Because it's all anti-Jewish. Anti You're tarnishing the whole community of the Jewish people by some of these, because of the works of the Talmudic Kabbalists, right? Let's be fair. Let's be fair. It's the same people who do this. They do it with the Muslims. Like, I used to be a former Muslim. And now you're going to... I'm going to, like, wait for it now. Now everyone's going to say that I'm defending Muslims. I used to be a Muslim. My family are Muslim. They're very loving, peace-loving people. Right? You can't tarnish a group of people, the whole bunch, with the same pain. You can't do that. It's wrong. It's really wrong. And I, and I detest it. The... The prophetic, vi um, my Bible prophecy angle, if you like, I believe that the end times beast is going to be an Islamic beast, all right? Now, how anti-Islam does that sound? 
I'm very aware of how I might come across when I'm talking about the Antichrist being Muslim, the harlot being Saudi Arabia. I understand how that might sound to people who I love who are Muslims and they're going to think I'm anti-Muslim. But I'm going by exactly what's written in here. It's, I'm not doing I see Jesus. I'm not fitting my perspective or my, um, my version into the word i'm not forcing it in there all right it takes the holy spirit to give us understanding and i'm not saying that i know it all i absolutely don't the lord has corrected me so many times on several different issues my goodness you guys i was in the hebrew roots movement there ain't no other bigger deception currently out there than that and it took his grace his mercy to pull me out of that thing and not only myself but my friends also so I know when I'm wrong and I ask the Holy Spirit to help me. It's by his grace. It's by his grace and his mercy. But some people, they're so sure on their doctrine, they're so sure on their eschatolog eschatological views, I can't even say the word, that there's no room for improvement. There's no room in there for them to be flexible. They just shout it down. Anyone that has an opposing opinion, they don't want to hear it. That it's like, see no evil, hear no evil. They're like, they don't want to hear it. The gentleman that, oh, don't we call him a gentleman. He's not a gentleman. He's a fool talking to a, um, a Christian sister like this on internet. This was my response to him. The guy who called me a Judas. Sonia, there is more than enough evidence about the Noahide laws. And there isn't. It's all propaganda. You're either a Jewess yourself or a shekel taking traitor or just silly i'm not sure which this was my response to him and i thought it was important that i mention it on video i said david i'm a born again believer in jesus christ he pulled me out of the darkness of islam in 2001 he gave me a new heart and spirit he is my king i have known him in the lowest pits of despair and he has delivered me he is so gracious and merciful. He has, put a, he has put a new song in my heart and he has given me a mouth to speak. No one can shut me up. Not the radical Muslims, not the radical Christians, not the radical Jews. Heck, not even Satan himself. He can't stop me unless the Lord permits. God willing, I shall never sell out to fools or deceivers. God forbid. I'll gladly die for his namesake, for he is worthy of all praise, honour and glory. I am called by his name, Jesus. That's who I am. Who are you? Go and repent and pray for forgiveness for slandering one of God's children and for falsely accusing me. <laughs> so that was my response to him. And that's my response to all of you out there who seem to just want to come on here, attack me for having a different opinion to yours right it's like people want to own a theology people want to come in and own a particular perception nobody owns it nobody does you do not have a monopoly on youtube you do not have a monopoly on christian true news you don't have the monopoly on it all right i'm really uh, i'm really upset about it actually <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry if this offends you i really do but you know what we got to get over the offenses we have to come to the place where we get over the offence, deal with it quick, and not be so egotistical about it. It's all about the ego, the pride, our name, our ministry, our perception. We've really put it out there. Now we've got to defend the baby now. No, we've got to humble ourselves and say, you know what, I've been wrong. I've been wrong on this. And I've had to reevaluate. When I was in the Hebrew Roots Movement, ask my friends on, on, um, on Facebook, ask my friends, how I was shoving it down their throats about the Sabbath and how I was, because I didn't know any better, I was being brainwashed, indoctrinated. How I would go on Facebook every Friday night condemning Christians because they're lawless, they wouldn't keep the Sabbath. I was going on there with my Shabbat Shalom memes, making them feel really inferior. I repented of that. I repented. Because it didn't take us long. Some of us who left it, it took us about a year. We noticed that the, the spirit wasn't there. The Holy Spirit, he was grieved in that movement. I come on Facebook.
Facebook, I did a video, I Left the Hebrew Roots Movement. How many people are willing to go out there and just say, I was wrong, I was deceived, I was blinded, put your hand up, put your hand up, is anyone willing to say I was wrong? I retract, you know, I revise, I reconsider, please forgive me, whatever, right? No, how many people are out there who are willing to do that? Praise God. Praise God for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Praise God for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. If we don't have the conviction of the Holy Spirit, we're doomed. I'm telling you, our hearts are so hardened that we, we need to worry. We need to worry. We need to worry. Where was I, guys? I was talking about something. I was in the middle of something. Yeah, I made bullet points here. All this Noahide law stuff is just spreading anti-Jewish hysteria, this hatred. Killers of God. I can't believe that this thing has come full circle. We're in the end times, you know that. We are, we're at the, Jesus Christ is at the doors. That's how I feel. I feel the Lord Jesus, the King of Kings is at the doors. And what did he say when he returns? Will he find faith? Will he find faith when he returns? The Antichrist, this all this drama about or oh, the Noahide is spreading throughout all the earth, all the nations. No. No. The Antichrist, God is not gonna allow this dude to have control over all the earth. It's not gonna happen. Do you not remember the end? At the end, he's gonna separate the sheep nations from the goat nations. The sheep and the goats is a reference to the nations. Not all nations are gonna be goat nations. They are gonna be some nations that are gonna remain righteous in God's eyes. That's really gonna throw some of your eschatology out of the window now, isn't it, for some of you out there. You want it, you want it to be that the Antichrist is gonna take charge of all the earth. Well, he isn't. There are gonna be nations that are gonna resist him. I'll read that. Let me read a little excerpt. Now, hold on. Let me let me go back to something. I do want to mention this in this video, but I'm touching on it. They're saying the Antichrist is going to be Jewish, right? But hold on. In Revelation, in Revelation, where do I go, Lord? All right, Revelation 13. Is it still recording all right? I hope the thing is going on. Oh dear, something flashed across the screen anyway. Just ignore it, Sonia, and just carry on. In the book of Revelation, chapter 13, this is the Antichrist, all right? Let's not forget the word, what the word says, all right? Let's go back. It's like whatever's going on out there in the world, all right? I'm cynical, I'm sorry. I'm a very cynical person and the Lord is working on me on that thing, all right? He's working with me on that, not to be so cynical, but you know, I, I try to use it to my advantage. I'm like, well, okay, test all things, right? Test, be suspicious, check it all out. Not to be overly suspicious, I, you know, granted, I am cynical. Let's go to the Bible. In Revelation chapter 13, oh, so much to read. Now the beast which I saw, the beast, the Antichrist, listen to this guys, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. Did you hear that? So the beast is like a leopard. It also has a mouth like a lion, and its feet are the feet of a bear. Right, when it says the beast is like a leopard, that's referring to the Grecian Empire. Oh, I hate the light on my videos, honestly, I'm so sorry. The exposure is really bad. The beast kingdom that's coming is going to resemble the Grecian Empire. That's what that is saying, it's giving us a hint. The Bible is giving us so many hints and clues, different angles. It's not get one scripture 
and base all your theology on the one scripture. No. It's multifaceted, the Bible. Why do you think there's so many books? So many books in the Bible are prophetic. They prophesy of his first return, Jesus Christ, and also of his second return, and also of this key figure, the Antichrist. The beast also uh, has feet of a bear. Now, what does the bear represent? The bear represented the Medo-Persian Empire. So the beast is going to have a kingdom that resembles the Grecian Empire. It's going to have feet like the Medo-Persians. And thirdly, it's going to have a mouth like the Babylonians, which was the mouth of the lion. It's telling us clearly the nature of the geographic location, the language, the manner in how this kingdom is going to spread and how it's going to arise. That is also a reference to the book of Daniel, but that's going, that's going to be another topic and I'm going to save it for another time. Where in all of that, in that scripture, does that give any resemblance to a Jewish antichrist? you saying it's blurry? Is it? If it's working, give me a thumbs up, please, because I don't know if I should cut this off and start again. If it's blurry, give me a thumbs up. If it's good, give me a, a give me a heart. Put a, hit the heart. I know the video will probably save when I upload it, so I'll carry on. I'll carry on talking. Anyway, that's another thing. I'm so sorry. But the reason why I mentioned it is because I believe this Seven Hour Hide Laws propaganda, hysteria, hype, deception. I'll go as far as calling it a deception, a movement, another one. Goodness, you get, you deal with one deception, the Hebrew roots, blinking madness, where Gentiles are keeping Torah. Anything so ridiculous before. And then you're dealing with another one over here. Deception is rife at the moment. Honestly, Lord have mercy on us. They're connected. They're connected. What does it say in the Bible about all nations are going to come against Jerusalem in the end times? All right. God is a defender of Jerusalem. I don't care what you think. I don't care what I think about that. That's it. That's a done deal. It's, that's it. That's the end of the story. If we love Jesus Christ, he's a Jew, isn't he? They're so quick to say Jesus' real name is Yeshua, Yeshua, yeah? And then you've got the same, very same people saying the Jews are the problem. Of the world. You know what, all you people that are very anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic, you might as well join camp. Why don't you cross over and join camp with the Muslims? Because your rhetoric matches their rhetoric to a T. Let me read you something. Not all of them, please, whoever's out there, don't mix up my words. Don't distort it, because I told you my family are Muslim and I love them. Check this out. Anti-Semitism in Islam. They say the same things, you know, that the same things that these people are saying. It's terrible. Which one shall I read? I'm going to read you something. Let me read you a quote. Extermination of Jews will be good for humanity. That's from Hamas Weekly, and it was the edition of 2007. I know it's a really old one. I need to get another one. In an article promoting the continued use of suicide terror in the official Hamas newspaper. I'm going to read the article, right? We find occasional condemnation and denunciation of the resistance operations and bombing suicide attacks carried out by Hamas and the Palestinian resistance branches. Eventually, everyone, this is Hamas, right? They're saying that oh, people are always condemning us, condemning us for the um, terrorist suicide missions that they do. I'm going to continue. Eventually, they say, everyone will know that we did these suicide attacks only because our Lord, Allah, commanded so. We do not do this of our own accord. And so the people will know that the extermination of the Jews is good for the inhabitants of the world. So all you people who are blaming the Jews for all of the troubles of the world, yeah, you so-called Christians, 
Your rhetoric is just like that. You'd be happy with that, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you be happy? Because you're spreading this fear-mongering nonsense out there that they're controlling the world. They want to behead all the Christians. Beheading is going on right now. I'm no, I'm in no denial. But it's not in the West, is it? Where is it going on? You're so desensitized. You're so far removed from where the persecution is at its peak right now. You're so far removed from that. Some of these people have gone so far as saying that, oh, oh we've been scapegoating the Islamic extremists all along while it's been the Jews that are the real culprits. Repent. Repent, you guys. Repent for saying such things like that. Where's the fruit of the spirits? Where's the fruits? Where are they? If these people focused half of the time that they do on this thing, on prayer, on maybe doing some sort of like online praying ministry intercession for the peace of Jerusalem, the way I see it, the more we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we're asking for the Prince of Peace to come. Because there's not going to be any peace until he returns. That's how you hasten the day of the Lord. You hasten the day of the Lord by seeking him, by seeking his presence, him coming down to set up his kingdom on earth. And his kingdom is going to reign from Jerusalem. All right? He's setting his kingdom in Jerusalem. I'm not in I'm not deceived, I'm not blinded. I haven't got my head in the sand about the um Illuminati, the Masons, the Kabbalists. I'm not ridiculously that blinded, all right? I know what I'm talking about. I'm so worried. This is why I come on and I'm talking about all this stuff. I'm going to continue. This is what else the likes of Hamas say. Don't be afraid of those Zionists. They are on the verge of death. Their time has passed. Do not surrender your people to them. Don't you know the nature of the Zionists? Don't you know who the Zionists are? They came in order to take over our region in its entirety. At first they said they wanted a country from the Nile to the Euphrates. Once they got settled they said that they had been a mistake and that they wanted all the Islamic lands. Unless they are put in their place at the very beginning of their conspiracy and fitna, fitna means like trouble or causing strife, they will jeopardize the security of the whole world and they will jeopardize the security of the whole region. See, Hamas is blaming the Jews, the Zionists, for the troubles of all the world. That's making the light on my camera worse. Hold on, I'll put the laptop down a bit more. Unless they are put in their place at the very beginning of their conspiracy and fitna, they will jeopardize the security of the whole world. They will jeopardize the security of the whole region. They want the entire world. At their very first step, you must crush their step, their leg, so they do not dare to invade the Muslim lands. I could go on and on. You look, there have been many threats against the Jews since the time of Muhammad. That's no secret, right? I've got to turn the screen down. It's giving me really bad glare on my screen. It's projection. It's a projection. What does Satan do? He's always accusing the brethren, right? He's the accuser of the brethren. These people, they're aligning themselves. How can they both have the same philosophy? Think about it. How can they both have the same philosophy, you know? It's like the protocols of Zion again, isn't it? Mein Kampf. Did you notice... This is crazy. Mein Kampf, Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, right? My struggle. It means my struggle. It's just like jihad. Jihad means struggle, doesn't it? People forget that the Nazis and the Muslims collaborated for the Holocaust. They forget. What a short memory we have, isn't it? History can keep repeating itself over and over and over again, yet people still have a short memory. 
I'm really sad. It's really regretful. It's really regretful. It's like over there, they don't care what what denomination we are. Catholics, Orthodox, Christian, Baptists. Over there, they don't care. As long as we are bearers of the name of Jesus and represent him and his cross, they don't care. They don't make any distinction. The Muslims make no distinction between us. Why do we? Why do you and I make a distinction between us? Why is it that way? It needs to stop. It needs to stop. And it's not going to stop. I'm saying it needs to stop, but it's not going to stop. It's going to go on and on. In Revelation chapter 12, I'll write that down. In Revelation chapter 12, you know, every year we hear about the constellation in the stars, right? You've got these ministries out there, all this hoo-ha about all oh, the constellations in the stars and how they mean, you know, they mean something as a sign, right? The blood moons and, you know, the dragon and the virgin is seen and the light. They're just, they're not, they're just not reading the word for what it is. It's a very symbolic book, the book of Revelation. It's full of symbolism, right? In Revelation 12, it says, in verse 17, And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he, won he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Antichrist is going to make war against the Jewish believers in Messiah and against uh, the Gentile believers in Messiah. All right? So pick your side. Where do you stand? It drives you batty. Same here, sis. I'm telling you, it's like ludicrous. I have to say something sometimes. You can't just stop because there's not many of us saying this out there. You know, Jesus said, enter the narrow, the narrow, right? Because it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to be singled out there, isn't it? And just go against the grain. To go against the flow. This no hide law business. Look at how wide this gate is. Thousands and thousands of people are believing this. The gate is wide. Loads of people are falling for it. And I think the only conclusion is that they are setting themselves up for the Antichrist. Because they're looking at the Muslims now who've been causing terror in all the world. They're looking at them now with mercy, saying, no, they're the scapegoats. The real problem are the Jews. They're, gonna, they're setting themselves up for the Antichrist. That's what I think. Yeah, we've got to be careful. In Ezekiel 38, God says, I believe it's actually a reference to Jesus, because he's, one, he's the one who's coming down, right? He's going to put hooks in the nostrils of Gog, the chief head of Magog, and he's going to draw him to his nation in Israel to fight, to attack Israel. God's going to do it. So if God is the defender of Jerusalem, where do you stand? I'm going to stand with God and I'm staying with him. I'm sticking with Jesus. Notice I said I'm sticking with Jesus, not with Israel. I'm sticking with Jesus Christ. All right? I love you guys. What else do I need to cover? This stuff don't even matter. I was going to go into the presidential recognition of commemoration days. There's a lot to cover on here. Maybe I'll do it another time. I'm feeling my throat is a little funny. Do you know Muslims also have holidays that were passed unanimously as well? Muslims, they've got holidays in Congress. Why does nobody make a song and dance about that? Because don't they want to subjugate the whole world under Sharia? Don't they want to uh, de sort of classify all non-believers, non-Muslims as dhimmi? Dhimmi means second class citizen status. Why is there no drama about that? Yeah, why is there no drama? Because this Trojan horse is doing just what he's always done. This whole thing is a distraction. If there's anyone that is really believing the no hide law stuff and you happen to be listening to me, if you come this far in my video, 
<laughs> I doubt it. But if you're out there and you've come this far listening to me, please stop listening to that stuff. Please stop it. It's not good. It's not bearing any fruit. You won't be able to hear from the Holy Spirit because you're, you're, his voice is being drowned out by all these, these propagandists out there, these sensationalists. Go back to the Bible. Go back to the Bible. Go in your prayer closet. Do whatever you can. Talk, discuss these things out. But stop listening to these folks, honestly. Listen to some of it. Make your conclusions. Compare and contrast your notes. But primarily, stick with the Bible. We need fellowship more and more. Everything right now is so difficult for a lot of us who left the Hebrew roots and we've left this movement or whatever. It's very difficult for us to find fellowship in churches. Because a lot of these churches, all they worry is about tea and cakes, right? They're happy with their tea and cakes, biscuits and crochet classes. This, it's very hard to find those churches, right, that are really getting to the meat of the word. But it's still no excuse. There's no excuse, is it? If you separate one coal from amongst the rest of the coals from the fire, that coal will lose its fire. You've got to come back amongst the other coals and kin get kindled. And the way my friend and I, and some of us on Facebook, the way we are doing it, and we'd like to do some more, is on our Facebook page. It's called Crossword. And if there's anyone out there who's like-minded, um, I'd welcome you to come and join us. Join us in Crossword. Um, it's possible that we could um, do some Bible studies together, you know, examine the Word, talk about things that really concern us, that are important, right? Come and join us. Come and find us. It's called Cross Word. Cross and Word, like the Bible word. All right? Come and find us. Join join us, all right? I know it's not easy. It's difficult for people to get fellowship, and most of it is online nowadays, you know? We go on YouTube. We get fed from the preachers, teachers out there, but it's, that, it's, it's a really dangerous, dangerous place, you know? Very dangerous. Don't forget Satan has the is called the prince of the power of the air. Right? Ultimately he's calling the shots. This is how I like to see it. Satan's in control in a certain in a certain aspect. But God is in charge. Alright? You've got the boss man in charge. Right? Because ultimately his counsel alone stands. He holds the councils of the nations to note, it says in the word. But right now, Satan's in control. He's in control, all right? Until the title deeds are claimed by Jesus, the Lamb of God, in Book of Revelation, he's the only one that's worthy to open the scrolls, to break the scrolls. Those are the title deeds. He's going to take it back. Um, just, you know, just... My next video is going to be next Friday. And I'm going to talk about this false notion, I'm going to just say it, it's a false notion that the coming Antichrist is going to be a Jew. And I know where that theory comes from, it's from the old, old church fathers initially, because they were the ones who were saying the Jews are the killers of Christ. And so that whole mindset began there, and it's wrong, it's wrong, and it's, um, it's very unscriptural. And I'll, I'll talk about that next Friday. When this video goes up on YouTube, please subscribe. I'm a little person. I don't have a major following. And it's not the, um, the quantity, is it? It's the quality. But even my quality is not that good, is it? <laughs> I don't have all the flash presentations like most people do on YouTube. I don't. I wish I could show you presentations on, on my laptop here. I would love to do that. I'm going to work it out. I'm going to work out a way of doing it in Jesus' name. If he wants me to, then he'll make it, he'll make it happen. But right now, you're just going to have to... <laughs> you're going to have to do with it the way it is. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'm going to call it a night. And um, food for thought, eh? Oh... It's so foolishness that these people have made so much drama out of it. It's so... <laughs> I mean, it's... I'm laughing. It's comical, but it's really sad as well, isn't it? It's really sad. Yes, darling, that's my cat. Hello, Fifi. 
Anyway, I'm sorry I was really, I mean, I was expressing heated emotion once again, but you know, I'm passionate, so um, like it or lump it, all right? <laughs> Love you, thank you very much for being with me. Thank you for your time, it's so nice to have your company. Really appreciate it. Okay, I'll make it public.